Hold on, I'm gonna test it. How do I work? Do you work on the thing or no? Welcome. So welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> you're, you're, it, I can tell that we were having some difficulties in connection because your name is spelled as Fiona Am. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Good afternoon, Treasurer Ma. I am so Hello. glad that you were able to join us today to talk about, uh, gosh, everything that's going on. So we had a little bit of technical difficulties in the beginning, so I apologize for everyone, but it's so amazing that we can even put this together, let alone make it run, uh, given that we weren't even doing this kind of stuff 10 days ago, right? This is all kind That's of true. Yeah. That's true. So welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We've got a lot of questions for you, and but we're just going to start off a little bit. If you don't mind, I'll give you just a brief introduction. So sure. Treasurer Ma and I have known each other for a decade. Um, and I came late to the party because she has been in politics basically since 2002. Was that when you yep. first started, right? She was yep. first elected to the Board of Supervisors in 2002. Um, before that, she was a professional accountant and was then on the staff of John Burton. Uh, she, that was her introduction to politics. And it, the first step, the first elected office is probably one of the toughest elections ever for a board of supervisors for San Francisco. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, and then you served there and then moved on to the state assembly where we got to meet when you were at the time, uh, the whip and your job at that time was to locate um, red to blue candidates. And I was running and we became friends. Exactly. Uh, you have been a mentor of mine ever since and a good friend. Uh, we always have a bottle of California white chili in our refrigerator for whenever Thank someone you. can come over. Uh, then you were the uh, speaker pro tem and presided over the uh, assembly. And we had a couple of real interesting videos, especially when our current supervisor got in an altercation with another member. That was pretty funny when you were presiding. You remember that one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> And then, um, of course, you served on the Board of Equalization, watching our money. And, and that was a very interesting time. We were going through the regulation and taxation of cannabis. Um, and then uh, now, of course, elected to be the first woman of color to serve as our treasurer and the first female CPA. So uh, that's your background. But could, can I ask you to fill us in just a little bit on why you and your background and career prepares you so well for serving in this very unique pandemic time of a pandemic? Yeah, so um, thank you, Melissa, for hosting us here today. Uh, number one, I started out uh, my career or public service uh, interest representing women and minority small businesses. And I realized way back when how hard it is to have a small business, right? Most people are just trying to keep the doors open. If they have employees, take care of their employees. Yet all around, there's lots of bureaucracy, uh, tax filings, audits, um, you know, who, who knows who's gonna um, knock on your door. And so for me, um, small business owners, regardless of what type of disasters or pandemic is happening, small business owners are always the ones that suffer the most. Uh, they don't know how to access information. They don't know who to call for help. By the time they do get the information, there's an 800 number nobody picks up. Websites crash. You know, the money is all gone like this time with the PPP system. And so uh, what my office did uh, to pivot, my external affairs office did was do exactly what we do in every uh, downturn. Uh, so first, Board of Supervisors, uh, I got elected during the dot-com bust, so never saw a surplus. Then in the state assembly, was elected during the Great Recession, so again, never saw a surplus. And then now as state treasurer, right, this pandemic just happened, second year in this job, and so we're kind of ready uh, for these emergency situations. So my office uh, compiled a small business resource 
guides, as well as food access and tax relief, and also resources for individuals on my website at www.sto.ca.gov. I don't know if you have a chat function going, but my external affairs team, um, I'm, I, I'm, I had to log on on my, my little iPhone today, so I don't see all of the bells and whistles, uh, but um, we update that on in real time, uh, any new program that comes from the federal government, like this uh, week, we had the uh, PUA, uh, Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, uh, that is all downloaded. State resources, local governments, like let's say Irvine, put together a program, we would upload that, as well as private enterprises are also offering different grant and loan programs. So please go to our website. We're also encouraging people to go to the official state health and human services website for what is the truth versus what is a myth. There's a lot of things on the internet that I am just cringing about because I know that it is not real. Sometimes it's what other people tweet about, but please go to our state website, www.covid19.ca.gov. It also has not only health and safety uh, information, uh, whatever the governor's new executive orders are on there. They also have programs uh, for all sorts of businesses. Um, so we encourage uh, folks to go to our official line. Um, seniors have a hotline as well, because not all seniors are on the internet. Uh, so that phone number is 833-544-2374. And they have all types of languages on there uh, for seniors to go onto. And then I would just also warn people that there's probably a lot of scams happening. Uh, my dad, I was home last weekend and all of a sudden my dad's computer started like ringing with X marks and it was like Microsoft uh, needs you to call right now. And my dad knew it was a scheme because he fell for it the last time. Uh, and so he knew to close his computer. He went and took a nap, came, came back, opened it and that X was gone. But please know that governments will never call you and ask you for your social security number. Uh, your bank account routing number, your credit card. They'll never ask you for a cashier's check to go down to your local 7-Eleven. Um, that is definitely a scam and just be really, really careful right now as people are waiting for their stimulus checks in the mail, for example. Uh, there are gonna be people that are impersonating uh, tax professionals, um, government agencies, even maybe CPAs who are gonna offer to help. So please be aware of that. And if we don't answer any questions today, we have a dedicated email, askfiona at treasure.ca.gov. And I've got my experts uh, who can answer your questions or at least put you, uh, connect you in the right direction so that you can have your, your um, questions answered. So I look forward to answering questions here today. And I know um, we are on today with Small Business Majority. Uh, they have partnered with us on many webinars in the past, and I know Gloria, uh, Claudia Moreno, uh, she is um, in charge of small business majorities, outreach, education, and policy efforts in the Inland Empire and Central California regions. And they do a great job in, um, in um, uh, telling all of us what is the latest and greatest with the new PPP a program that was just funded as well as uh, information for those who are independent contractors or even gig workers. Uh, it's a great opportunity. This is the first time that they are included in unemployment insurance. So I'm going to turn it over to Claudia and then we will come back and perhaps answer some questions that people may uh, be asking us or maybe you've got uh, questions that you um, have fielded uh, before. So thank you, Melissa. Uh, thank you, uh, Treasurer Fiona Ma, and thank you, Council Member Fox, for inviting us. Um, I know that for, for um, Treasurer Fiona Ma, we worked together in the last year on a lot of um, in-person workshops as well for small businesses across the state. So we know that this is very important for you, um, and we're very excited to be here. So I will share my screen. Um, to, um... Great. Can you all see my screen? Yes. 
Okay, perfect. Thank yeah. you. But if um, we could put it on the main PowerPoint view so we could see the big screen, yeah. some people might be on their phones. Um, let's see one see. slide at a time. Is it is this better or no? Let's see. Let's try one more time. Um, okay, let me know if this works. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay, great. Awesome. So we at Small Business Majority have so much content, so many updates, but I'm going to give uh, three of the biggest, um, the biggest updates uh, happening within the last week. So really quickly at Small Business Majority, we are a national nonprofit where we focus on three pillars. So first and foremost, we do a lot of research to best understand what are the trends, issues, and opportunities happening with our small businesses. Um, as of last week, we just launched a new poll of uh, how small businesses are getting impacted by COVID-19 nationally. And then we also released one um, of small businesses here in California. So I um, highly encourage you all to check out our website to check out the, the, the results and how small businesses um, and the issues they're facing today. So we do a lot of research um, around access to capital, healthcare, retirement, different issues, um, which then helps us in our second pillar, which is education. This is one small scope of the educational work that we do. Um, we, you know, in the world outside of COVID-19, uh, we do in-person presentations with chambers, elected officials, a lot of different organizations across uh, the country uh, to make sure that our small business owners are equipped with the right and essential information so that their business continues to grow. Obviously, right now with what's going on, uh, everything is through webinars and we're partnering with a lot of different organizations um, as we continue to update our small business owners with the new information that's being unfolded by the hour. And last but not least, um, the advocacy. I can talk to you all about all these small business owners, but there's nothing as powerful as the actual small business owner telling their story to the media to the lawmakers um, of how they're getting impacted by this. So um, at the end, I will also talk about opportunities if you wanna share your story um, with the media um, so, so that um, to, to tell folks in the community what uh, small business owners are facing right now. Now, really quickly, just to give a, you know, we, we all know and have an idea of the impact small business owners have, but, you know, I, I love to show these two slides to really um, get a full understanding of what that really means. So if we look at small businesses across the country, 99.7 of the small businesses are, um, are, are, are the employer firms here. So if we look at these numbers, 6 million small businesses employ about 40 million Americans across the country. So the small businesses like yourselves, you are the ones generating two out of the three jobs. Um, so it's, it's, it's so vital and important that we continue um, to support and push for legislation to support so that you don't close your business. And if anything, um, continue to, to thrive in the situation that we're in. The other piece here is um, out of every dollar that I spend in a small business, 52% of that dollar continues to circulate within that local economy versus $1 I spend on a larger business. So that also just comes to show the importance of how these small businesses are not just an impact for them as entrepreneurs and, and, and their business and employees, but in their own community and, and what that dollar goes in the long run um, and the domino effect of supporting a small business. Now, really quickly, um, I'm going to go over policy updates and the unemployment insurance here, um, which are two of the biggest um, questions that we're getting a lot from our small businesses. So there's been a lot of, um, uh, the Congress has passed a lot of bills. And um, in you know two minutes, I'm going to cover really quickly what that means so you have a, a good understanding. So phase one was passed um, I don't think this was five weeks ago, but truly feels like five years ago, um, where President signed the Coronavirus Preparedness and Responsive Su Supplement Appropriations Act, which basically was um, funding to help federal agencies to respond in this um, uh, coronavirus outbreak. And some of that was also allocated to the Small Business Administration. Phase two was then uh, the family's first coronavirus response, which was expanding the support of the Emergency Family and Medical Leave Expansion Act for employees who were impacted um, by the coronavirus um, uh, situation. Now, phase three, which was passed four weeks ago or three, um, that was the one that created most of the buzz because this is where um, 
Congress came up with the CARES Act, which basically was um, $350 billion allocated to this new program called the Paycheck Protection Program, um, then another $10 billion into the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, um, known as EIDL, and then another um, uh, funding into small business development centers and other technical assistance providers um, to expand the capacity to help you out as small business owners. So I personally, I'm not your technical assistance expert, but our small business development centers are, and um, they are equipped and ready to answer any specific question that you may have with your business. Um, now, phase 3.5, which was um, the bill that passed last week, um, was basically allocating additional funding to the PPP and the EIDL program. And the breakdown to this was 310 billion into the PPP, um, but this time around, a lot more fundings were specifically allocated to um, credit unions, community banks, um, um, CDFIs known as community development financial institutions. So this also allows these smaller banks um, to have access to these fundings to give um, the, the PPP pro program, the PPP loans to uh, small businesses. Um, in addition to that, another 10 billion were allocated to the EIDL grants, which is the money you get up front um, when you apply for the, the, the EIDL program and 50 billion for the EIDL uh, program loan in itself. Now, phase four and why this is so important to highlight is because, um, you know, this is why the, the importance of uh, you, your engagement and your voice being heard as a small business owner. So phase four is still in the conversations. There's still a lot to be hashed out in this, um, in this phase, um, but we expect for this um, uh, this package to be a total of up to $1 trillion. Um, there's a lot of details to be um, talked about, but what this might include is a more state and local funding and assistance, uh, another round of direct checks to taxpayers, uh, shielding businesses and healthcare workers from um, opportunistic lawsuits as state's law, um, the ground to work for starting to reopen shorter, um, the shorter parts of the economy. Now, this is just, um, you know, this, this is what we are seeing right now, but this can change tomorrow or in the next upcoming weeks. Um, but I, I will also include in the links of how you can sign on to our campaign to ensure that Congress lawmakers are listening, um, the, that small business owners need more assistance, uh, grants, uh, so that their business uh, survives. Um, so I will share that link at the end. Now, um, the uh, really going through some slides here um, so that we, okay, so the pandemic additional compensation program was passed um, through the CARES Act as well, which basically you may have heard of these $600 additional fees, um, additional funds into your unemployment insurance. Uh, so this is something that if you are currently under unemployment insurance, these, um, it will be that amount in addition to the $600 um, to the end of July. Now, who can qualify for um, this portion of the, of the money is basically anyone who has been let go, furloughed, can no longer go into work as a result of COVID-19. Um, so basically the math is whatever that state's amount is giving you for unemployment insurance, plus the $600 um, to the end of July 31st. Now, no Treasurer Fiona Ma mentioned the pandemic unemployment insurance, which was launched yesterday um, in the state of California. And I will um, also include the link of where you can apply. So for the first time, um, if you are self-employed, independent contractor, um, for the first time, um, you can also get unemployment um, uh, assistance as well. And this link was launched yesterday. So for any self-employed independent contractor, um, where in, in another life you weren't eligible for these unemployment insurance, you are now eligible. Um, and it's really important to note that um, how this is going to look like. So. Um, Here's another quick, um, the, the phases of the rollout of the funds that you'll be getting if you identify as a, a contractor. So um, as you see phase one here, uh, we, you, it's the base minimum of $167 per week um, between the months of February 2nd through March 28th if, you, if your business was directly impacted as a result of COVID-19. Now in phase two, you will get a base minimum of $167 plus the $600 um, that was passed 
passed on behalf of the CARES Act. And here you have another window of, of when that paycheck um, and those funds kick in for your unemployment insurance um, money. And then phase three is another, the bare minimum of 167 per week um, to the end of December 26th of 2020. Now, when I say the bare minimum, it's like you start at the, the ground is at 167, but that does not mean that you cannot that you can't get more. You can, um, and uh, that will be case by case scenario, depending on how much money you were making. Um, and in the application form that we have seen uh, under the PUA is um, you fill out this quick 10 minute questionnaire of your business, um, you know, uh, how you've been impacted and so forth. It's not gonna ask you to upload any documents of any sort, but um, definitely have your 1099 all these forms, your tax filing, everything ready in case EDD reaches out to you for any further clarifications. Now, um, another thing to note is um, a lot of the questions we're getting, well, I already applied under the normal unemployment insurance. Um, can I still apply to the PUA? Uh, the answer is, um, if you heard back saying you got zero dollars of benefit money under the unemployment insurance, um, or you got denied by it, it is more likely because you were um, identified as an independent contractor or self-employed. So you need to apply to the PUA. Um, and so, so if you already applied through here, you need to reapply again through this other portal and another system, unfortunately. Um, the other common question that we get is, um, uh, um, oh gosh, I lost my train of thought. Um, the, the other question that we get is, if you are already receiving some sort of funding or some sort of money through the unemployment insurance, you cannot apply to the PUA anymore. You you're 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 you have to um, stay with with these with this unemployment insurance check that you're getting. Um, so um, obviously, um, I, I was telling um, earlier that the the metaphor that I love to give is we are building this plane while flying it at the same time. So there's a lot of questions um, that a lot of small business owners that are very specific to their, their, their business. Um, and we may not have all the answers yet, but um, those guidelines are being hashed out. So um, that's uh, kind of like the biggest takeaways. The other thing, um, and I know Treasure Fiona Ma touched upon, the scams are out there and they're coming in very creative ways. Um, EDD will not call you um, to ask you certain questions. They will communicate only through two ways, which is online and through the mail. So be very careful if you get some sort of call um, because they're getting very creative on how they're reaching out um, to, to um, you know, everybody. Um, and yeah, so I'll share the link of how you can identify which one you fall under, under un regular unemployment insurance or under the PUA for like the gig economy and self-employed folks. Um, Every state is different, and obviously we're here in California, so the link is live as of yesterday for you to apply, but know that I wanna be very clear that what is applicable here in California is not necessarily the same in another state across the country. Every state is handling these processes differently. Um, and with that, I'll wrap it up. Um, just I just wanna be mindful of time and to make sure we answer any questions. Well, thank you. We had some great questions. Yes. But first of all, thank you. That's some really great information. And the links are, are very, very uh, appreciated, very much appreciated. Now, if one of the questions that was asked in the comments, which I've gotten asked myself, is if I'm the sole owner of an S corporation, so uh, a small corporation, would I qualify under the PUA? Yes, it is under my understanding. Yes, let me double confirm that. Great, so that is going to open up a lot of people, um, especially I know in the city of Irvine, we've got a lot of small businesses and who have been completely put out of work. Now, what if um, they're able, like say for example, you own a restaurant and you're able to sell coffee drinks or, or you know, maybe your business is down to 20% of what it was before and you're a sole owner of a small corporation. Are you still able to apply under the PUA or do you have to have zero income? 
That is a, that's a great question that um, I've been meaning to look into. So I don't know the answer to that, but I need to, I need to find that out if, cause I, I'm, I'm getting a lot of the questions of, you know, my revenue is really low where I can't even pay myself out. So um, can I still apply to this? Okay, a small business owner. Yeah, and another question would be if you're in the gig economy and you have multiple jobs, and so say you are driving an Uber driver and you now um, maybe have Lyft and you're doing just food delivery, but your major income was, was as an Uber driver. So maybe you're getting, again, 20% of what you were before the pandemic. Are you still able to apply for relief? And would that be under the PUA or under, that would be under the PUA because you're, you're a gig worker. Right? You wouldn't otherwise be entitled for unemployment benefits. Yeah, I think that's kind of the same question as the first one. Um, and, and that I personally, I, I don't know, so I don't feel comfortable answering, but I will find out and I'll send it to, to your staff so that you can follow up with um, the folks here. Great, now we're recording this. So what we will do is put together um, answers to these questions. Cause I see the, the same question was just asked in a different form. So what about mom and pop stores that operate as sole proprietorships and file a joint tax return? So, you know, mom and pop, literally husband and wife are able to apply under the PUA. So these are questions that are, are kind of variations on the same theme. It sounds like it might be covered, but we're gonna get some very specific answers to these questions. We'll post the video on Facebook, or you can email me directly at mefox at cityofirvine.org, and I will answer you specifically, provide these answers to anyone who would like the, uh, the question. Okay, well, thank you, Claudia. Are there any other questions that Claudia can answer before we go back to our treasurer? Okay, well, I'm going to turn over to uh, Treasurer Ma. I, there's so much, we were gonna talk about affordable housing and I'll, I'll transition to that, but the next question I wanna ask is, I've known you for a long time and your government style has always been to dig into a problem. And you know, if you're on the agricultural committee, you were gonna visit every farm that you could. You're gonna understand all of uh, the four corners of the issues. And when we were looking at, you know, county fair boards, you were at every county fair. And I know when I first met you, I thought you lived in Southern California because you were here so often. Now, so that ha this has to be a very um, big change for you. And so I have like a two headed question. One, just tell us what you're doing every day because I know it's gotta look a lot different that I don't think that you're not on Southwest every day. And two, and can, as part of that answer, would you tell us what you're doing with the affordable housing bonds and, and you know, everything that you're doing? So just the, the practical and the substantive of sure. what you're doing today. Sure. So uh, this is week seven in my Sacramento office, Monday through Friday. Uh, I have about 450 employees, but about 100 of them have to be in the office every day. So we are the state bank. So every tax, fine, fee, interest, penalty, everybody pays, comes into my bank every day. That's why we are open for business. Uh, then we send whatever money uh, needs to be paid out to our state controller, Betty Yee. Uh, we invest any money that is not uh, being used by the state or local governments. We invest about $30 billion for different local governments like uh, Irvine, so thank you. Uh, and then we also sell bonds. And in this pandemic uh, moment, a couple weeks ago, we were the first state to go out into the market and the market treated us very favorably. We were oversubscribed and we were also able to refund some of the old higher interest bonds. So that is on a day-to-day -day basis uh, and that I am here in the office. Um, on the, uh, what was your other question? Oh, affordable well, housing. Right. Yeah, what are we doing in this pandemic? I mean, housing is still a crisis. We know that there are people who are housing insecure and much of that has to do with the lack of housing in the market. Yes. So could you respond to what we're still doing and how you're, as the state's banker, how you've been finding yes. 
Yes. Uh, so two of the boards that I chair, I chair uh, 14 different boards and commissions. Two of them have to do with affordable housing. The California Debt Limit Allocation Committee and the uh, California Tax Credit Allocation Committee. And these two committees are important uh, to create affordable housing here in California. And like you said, Melissa, we had a crisis before. It is actually probably gonna be worse coming out of this COVID-19 crisis. So we are open for business. We thank Governor Gavin Newsom for uh, re, uh, um, uh, his executive order allowing us to modify the way we do business. Uh, so I chair the meetings. We do it here in Sacramento. Uh, board members are able to call in remotely. Uh, people who want a public comment also call in and sometimes we live stream those meetings because there's so much interest in affordable housing. So at the last meeting, because of everything that's going on, the board decided to expedite uh, more bonds and tax credits to new development projects um, that uh, have applied. And we're hoping that many of them will be able to close their projects, they're shovel ready, uh, but for the financing and therefore we can continue uh, to create uh, the pipeline even during this time. So that is the way we have modified uh, our affordable housing uh, committee as well as some of our tax credit. Uh, Cal competes through GoBiz, uh, which uh, is another um, great website that I want folks to, um, to go to, but we had our Cal competes uh, meeting last week and we were able to continue to award uh, income tax credits for companies who uh, meet certain criteria but obviously makes a difference in terms of whether they locate in California or expand here in California. That's great and now we're getting some more questions in and I want to read them to you and, I, and if we get a chance I do want to come back to um, the tax credit issue. Uh, so we talked about the uh, different entities filing under the PUA. Um, we have a question. My nonprofit is an affordable housing, so um, 501C, I imagine. There is an increasing amount of tenants who cannot pay their rent, so this will greatly reduce monthly income. I'm using the paycheck, paycheck protection to pay staff and pay rent for the space where you rent. What else is available to me? This is a great question. I also sit as the chair of the Irvine Community Land Trust. And so far we've been okay on rental payments, but we're really gonna run into trouble if we're not, um, if that changes. So maybe Claudia can take the first part and then I will uh, chime in on the second part. So the, the first, so the first part is any other, any other kind of alternative capital, right? Uh, independently from the PPP and the EIDL. So I, I think the one biggest, and I'll, I'll put in the link on where you can find them are, that I really wanna highlight because it's in close, um, uh, um, in relation to Governor Newsom's announcement of allocating $50 million to small businesses who don't qualify or could not get funds on behalf of the PPP and the EIDL are community development financial institutions. Uh, so they are, they are um, alternative lenders that provide loans for small businesses who don't qualify for, for a traditional loan. Um, so that is also something that we wanna really bring and highlight to small business owners to um, get to know their local CDFIs um, and start that relationship because a lot of uh, resources and fundings will come through with them. Uh, so we, we, we don't want to specify which, which CDFIs will or were not, but we just definitely want to make sure that that's on your radar. So that's one. Um, and then the second one is, and um, I'll include that link as well, um, we have this platform called Venturize.org where basically it has all the vetted lenders and small business development centers um, to, to ensure that you are getting contacted with the trusted partners and lenders and technical assistance. Uh, so um, that is also a great platform to, um, to find different lenders in your area. You put in your zip code and it throws out your local like ecosystem uh, resources. Um, and as well, it prevents you from predatory lending. I know we talked about these scams, right? Like I can't protect you from the online or what comes through your mail, but if you go on Venturize, you, you best bet that these are partners that we worked with for so many years um, to ensure that you don't fall into any sort of um, any sort of predatory lender. So that's, I'll start, that is a resource hub for other alternative capital. 
Yeah, and, and I would just chime in at the state level, uh, the iBank uh, has also allocated $50 million for loan guarantees to small businesses um, during this time, and nonprofits do qualify for that, and iBank is www.ibank.ca.gov. Another program under uh, my office is the CalCap program for small businesses, where we guarantee loan loss reserves for certain banks that participate in our program, which allows uh, these banks to uh, give loans to perhaps more riskier uh, type of taxpayers than under the normal um, strict guidelines. And again, you know, please work with your banker. Uh, your banker should be aware of some of these programs. Ask them if, you know, they're participating in the iBank program or the Treasurer's Office CalCap program under small businesses. If so, those may be avenues also for nonprofits as well. Great. Uh, and the next question is about the EDD. If a claim was filed with the EDD and the base payment is listed, but the money hasn't gone in yet, do you need to still go through the PUA? The money hasn't come in yet. It's like they haven't received the funds yet. Is, is that the question? Uh, it looks like the money has not yet come through. So it hasn't okay. been so um, based off of what I, know, so I, I don't work for the EDD, so just want to clarify that. Um, but uh, what I do know is that if, um, if, you, if you don't have this, this card or deposit card that they, they, they named, um, you will, it will come in like four or five days or so. So um, I would say just, just wait it out a few days for that to come in. Um, so I don't know exactly the timeline that they're on or how that's playing out. I do want to circle back on the other question that we touched upon um, uh, earlier about can you still apply to the PUA if your revenue has gone down significantly? The answer is yes. Um, I just found that out. So yes, you can apply to the PUA. Great. Uh, and, so, you know, listen, since we're talking about the EDD, um, I just learned uh, the other day that there are a couple of other programs that the EDD uh, provides for small business owners. Uh, for example, if you're experiencing a hardship you may request up to a 60 day time extension to file uh, your EDD um, and your uh, state payroll reports. Also, if you're experiencing a slowdown in your business as a result of coronavirus impacts, you may apply for the UI work sharing program. This allows employers to seek an alternative to layoffs. And then one other program, if you are planning a closure or major layoff as a result of the coronavirus, you can get help through the rapid response program. And that is also under uh, the EDD. Um, they have a very extensive uh, website with uh, FAQ uh, questions on it. And again, I would encourage folks um, who are interested in unemployment insurance to go to www.edd.ca.gov. Oh, that is very, very helpful. Okay, uh, what fine, oh, with an extra $600 for unemployment and already checks that have already been spent, sent, how can you bring employees back? Because in some cases, this is more than what they were making uh, when they were working. Yes. So unemployment, um, that special fund will run out at some right. point, and then folks are going to go back to either um, the, the lower unemployment uh, uh, amount that they get from the state, or perhaps go back to work where they will be making more money, hopefully. This is a great question, too. Wow, really good question. What financing is available to older nonprofit affordable housing with balloon payments that are due when loans mature? Great question. Wow, um, I have not had that question before, but if uh, this is a real situation, if you wouldn't mind emailing me more details at askfiona at treasure.ca.gov and also let me know who your lender is. Um, because it just may be um, one lender or it could be a, a bigger problem down the road. And so I would like uh, to do a little bit more investigation 
as you know, we work closely with our banks. So our banks are our banking partners. And I'm always interested to know what is happening out in the market. Well, you know, Treasurer Ma, we've talked about that, you know, what happens when those balloons come due and, you know, maybe rehab and redo. And there's hopefully a lot, going to be a lot of options now that this state is focusing on affordable housing. So let's hope that's the case. And, and I do want to say that, again, work with your bankers. If for some reason you can't pay your mortgage, your auto loan, um, whatever it is, uh, banks are being, um, you know, they're, they're being very, very compassionate. Uh, they don't want to take your home. They don't want to take the car. So, again, if you are facing, you know, dire situations, please go see your banker and, and uh, ask for relief. Terrific. Now, another, a couple of questions we got are on the issue of the $800 uh, business tax that are due every year. I think that's the, um, the LL, is that LLC payment? Yeah. Well, yeah. So there was a question about whether there's been any negotiations or movement toward waiving that $800 fee at a time when all these businesses, small businesses in particular, are struggling. Are you aware of any movement? Um, that is one of the recommendations that I put forward because, um, you know, the $800, like, let's say you're not making any, uh, revenues, you still have to pay that $800. It's called a minimize, uh, a minimum, um, tax. I don't think it has been waived, but I, am. Um, I have my, my experts here on the phone. So if you guys, uh, Catherine or Gloria can let me know whether, uh, there's been any change to the $800 minimum fee or not. Uh, that would That's be great. The AMT, right? AMT, alternative minimum tax. No, 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 no. This different? is just the minimum. So you're a um, uh, LLC, for example. You yes. have to pay yes. your eight hundred dollar fee. Okay. So far. Okay. Um, great. Can I add some? Sorry. Can I add? I know that there's like a lot of questions on here. Um, about um gosh i missed it um so there's there's a lot of questions so i i just really also want to highlight i covered probably 15 percent of all the other content that we have so um we are doing uh spanish and english webinars and then every friday policy updates that we're getting from dc um and in california so definitely check out our website um, uh, to to see to get those updates where we have like a full on like at five we have a spanish webinar to fully like go into depth of all these different questions on like um, the the shared program that Treasurer Fiona Ma talked about, so we just kind of want to want to put that out there. Now maybe Claudio, we could have you back on to do something focused specifically on these questions. Seems like we could spend easily an hour on this. If you would come <laughs> back, if you could book us, we we would appreciate it. We'd love to host you again. It's clearly yeah, thank you. And now, so the question is asked again, like, because we didn't specifically answer it. Do we have to pay the 800 or do we not? And the question is, we don't know. We have, uh, the treasurer yes. has specifically asked that that be passed, but legislation is changing so fast. So we would say we hadn't heard of it, but it could have been done today in a session and we didn't hear about it yet. Yeah, so the legislature, okay, let, let me just give you a quick update. Uh, the assembly is supposed to come back to session next week. Uh, the Senate has not uh, set a date for them to come back, but uh, they are going to be uh, negotiating uh, the budget with the governor, and obviously things are going to be changing. So please keep in touch with your assembly member and your senator uh, and your governor, uh, Gavin Newsom, uh, to let them know what it is that you feel needs to be addressed or what type of relief you need to pay. So I agree the $800 fee uh, is, is expensive. It's, um, you know, if you're not making any income, you still have to pay $800. I mean, that uh, to me doesn't make sense. But again, it's really up to the governor on whether um, he will waive this fee. Great. Okay, so the next question we have is pertaining to, you know, I've been hearing this in my capacity as a council member from every corner of our city. And the question is, rents need to go down up to 25% if many businesses will operate at 25% capacity. So I think that's part statement, but I'm hearing this from all over. Are there any programs at the state level 
for stopping rent hikes for to a rent freeze or for uh, mandating rents. I know we've dealt with commercial evictions, but what about rents? Yeah, so the governor um, made a proclamation uh, that there was going to be a moratorium for any evictions uh, during this time. I'm not sure if it was a 90 day uh, moratorium, um, but basically, not only um, is he protecting tenants, but also asking the banks uh, to work with uh, folks, um, you know, landlords at this moment, because we've got a lot of questions also that if people can't pay their rent or we cannot evict them, what do we do with our banks? Because we still owe the mortgage, right? And so I am just letting you know that a number of different banks uh, have come forward and said that they are going to be working uh, with uh, the, their their customers, whether they're going to extend uh, the term or the payment. Um, but they really, again, want to work with you. They do not want to foreclose and they don't want to take your car. So again, work with your um, you know, work with your banker. Uh, I know that there is a bill out there. I think it is uh, Assembly Member Ting's bill uh, to decrease the amount of rent by 25%. Uh, I'm not sure whether the legislature is going to be hearing bills or which bills they're going to be hearing. I understand they're going to only address bills affecting COVID-19. So that potentially will be one of the bills that move forward. But again, you know, stay tuned, uh, you know, make sure you sign up uh, for newsletters so that people, um, you know, will, will let you know whether uh, the bills are gonna happen or not. Yeah, and um, two things on, on, that, on that issue as well. One, uh, I know that all Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac products are required uh, to waive payments under federal law. And I know that our governor has negotiated with at least 20 banks to allow the same thing um, for the mortgages that they issue. I have heard that um, homeowners have been told by quote unquote call center people that if they uh, forego paying their rents or paying their mortgages for three months, they then they have an, a, balloon, a balloon payment in month four. That is almost overwhelmingly and across the board not the case, but there are people who are saying that because it is in the advantage of the lender for you not to accept that loan. So, or yeah. at least accept those terms. So make sure that just that you, what your bank's policy really is and not just what some telemarketer is telling you or, or I should say a debt collector is telling you on the phone. Yeah, exactly. And I, I talked to one of the major banks and they say that that is not their intention. Uh, they will work uh, with their customer to basically, you know, um, lengthen out their payments. So some sort of amortization over uh, the, the diff, you know, the, the number of months, but they don't expect uh, people that did not have a job for three months to have to come back on month four and have to pay three months of rent all at once. That's not their intention. Um, so. And I've heard from multiple places that that is being told to people. But once right. again, Treasurer Ma indicated that you have to make sure that the source of your information is accurate. Yes. And, and she's referred you to state sites and her own site. Um, I have another question from Mark Astorius of the Irvine Community Land Trust, our executive director. And he asked, the pandemic has caused a slowdown in inspections for tax credit projects currently under construction. We've applied to have an extension on the pr project completion date. Has TCAC taken an overall position on these requests or is it a case by case basis? <sighs> Uh, we did not take up that issue at the last TCAC meeting in April. Um, we would love to hear from folks and I'm sure we can extend it. Uh, we really you know, want to make sure that projects are continuing and we will give as much assistance as we can. And I will give you an example. Uh, TCAC uh, normally audits uh, many of our applicants, uh, either in person or desk audits. And obviously we can't do in-person audits, so we were going to uh, shift to desk audits 
And we heard from many of our clients that there's nobody in the office to do the paperwork, to put together uh, all the documents that you need. So will you please also uh, suspend from doing desk audits, which we agreed to. Uh, so now we are pivoting our employees to handle another backlog of another uh, form, the 8609 form. So please just keep in touch with us. Let us know, uh, contact Judith Blackwell or myself and just let us know what some of the difficulties you guys are, are facing. And of course, we're gonna do everything we can to accommodate you. Great, and there's um, one other question, which I know a couple of people have, have asked, which is I just started Say I just started my business where I'm in the startup phase, maybe six months, eight months, even a year, and we're still in the negative. We're still in the spend phase and not in the revenue phase. Is there relief available for companies that have not yet shown a profit or, or have gotten revenues in? Uh, that is a great question. I'll, 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 all I will say is um, if you have not been in business, if you started your business January or February of 2020, you can still apply to these funds like PPP and EIDL. Um, so, so you still qualify for that. Um, now, how much you were making or not, though, that I, I wouldn't know if you qualify or, or not or how that looks like. Um, but, th but that's a question that um, definitely the Small Business Development Center experts can guide you on. I think another, I guess a silver lining to, to the situation is that small business owners um, are, are forced in a good way to know their business better and know their numbers and know how to prepare, um, just not now, but like also think ahead, like how much am I losing six months out, a year out from now? How do I prepare for another pandemic should it come again? Um, so things of that sort. Um, I saw here, um, the $10,000 grant um, given up front. So just want to clarify that uh, the EIDL program is what you apply directly through the SBA.gov. Um, and you um, are then asked, um, as you complete that application, do you want to, up to $10,000 of, of money in your bank account? Um, that basically, if I have five employees, I will get $5,000 deposited. If I have, so it's $1,000 per employee. If, um, if I have 15 employees or 20, it will be capped at $10,000. So just want to clarify that if you got $2,000 and your other business owner got like $8,000, it's reflected of how many employees you have. Now the PPP, um, those funds, you don't get any upfront money at all. Um, that is basically once you get approved and the underwriting and the SBA has approved that, the bank will then deposit that into your account. Um, the other thing going back to scams, we've seen where like, People are like, you know, I'll, I'll fill out the application for you for $2,000 or $3,000. Like, you should not get charged for either of these programs either. So, um, so yeah, just I, I hope that that was um, clear for, for that uh, EIDL and the grants. Yeah, be careful of all these people um, claiming to want to help you and then all of a sudden they're charging you when uh, many of the services like uh, um, with the Small Business Development Centers are free. And they are being funded by the state as well as the federal government to help people for free. Great. Now, one last question, because I know we're getting into the end, and I, this is on everyone's mind, I'm sure. Let's talk about like the moratorium on the rent or the moratoriums on the evictions. We're looking at 90 days on many of these, right? So are they going to renew? So for example, if you don't have to pay your mortgage, um, you, you were laid off in January, February, right? Because you were in a service industry or a, a industry that was affected prior to our lockdown. Right. You're coming due. So are there any extensions on the horizon for these programs? Well, I think the governor uh, is taking it uh, day by day. He has a Newsom at noon press conference every day from Monday through Friday. So if you wanna hear the latest and greatest executive order or what he's thinking about opening back up California, um, I would encourage uh, folks to log on to that. Um, there are a number of programs. If you are really uh, unemployed and you're looking for opportunities, um, onwardcalifornia.org is a public-private partnership with the state of California and nonprofits uh, to connect people to jobs. There are about 110,000 job openings on this website. Um, and again, you know, another great website is the governor's office of GoBiz, 
and that website is business.ca.gov and they've got a whole host of different uh, programs, um, job openings, as well as even volunteer. Uh, we've got like a, a volunteer Peace Corps uh, for those who want to, you know, um, get out there and, and, you know, do a little service. Um, there's all sorts of different resources on that website. Great. Well, I would like in the chat if um, all of our the people who are putting the information in could list the Ask Fiona, my email address, Claudia's email address, because at, email us directly. I know we are all going to work to help you. And if we didn't answer your question or you have more specifics, give us, reach out to us at our offices and we'll do what we can with our resources to help you. And specifically, if you have a need that is beyond um, state assistance or uh, rent, but maybe just the basics, you know, food, utilities, um, reach out to us because we're here to help you. So great. Thank you so much for coming on, Claudia. Thank you, Fiona. It was great having you. We're going to record all of this. It'll be available on YouTube. It'll be available on my Facebook page and we will save the resources. So thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Melissa. Okay, be safe, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Thank you, Claudia.